I'm Nick and I'm your sales representative for Africa. Um, today I have the pleasure of introducing Dimitri to you. Hello everyone. The face behind the Meraki Insights demonstration. So you've all had some great interest and you've emailed in and asked about the product and we are now involved in some really interesting projects. Um, but today we're going to take you through SD WAN and Dimitri has kindly offered to join me so that he can provide you with that demonstration. So Dimitri, tell us SD WAN, hmm. what is this all about? Yeah, so I just uh, want to uh, uh, want to go back to basics and kind of understand uh, what problems does SD WAN trying to solve, right? So uh, looking back at the traditional uh, network architecture, you have uh, your main site or your hub. Uh, hosting, uh, you know, your applications in your own servers, and then you use uh, kind of expensive MPLS lines to connect all your branches uh, or sites together so they can all access on this, right? Um, nowadays, uh, this type of architecture is uh, becoming a bit um, obsolete. Mm -hmm. um, the reason for this is that, first of all, we have a way more business traffic crossing these links and scaling them. Uh, buying more bandwidth is extremely cost prohibitive and um, secondly we use more and more cloud services so if in the past you're using your own email servers you now use G Suite for example you're using Office 365 so from a performance perspective it makes sense to have a local breakout to have a cheap internet line in each site uh, and then of course people demand more right so BIOD coming with your own devices um, you know browsing the web maybe you know, great etc having guest access uh, these things cannot be built scalably and cost effectively on top of a traditional uh, network architecture and the demands are just getting more and more I suppose mm -hmm. on every network users yeah. bring more devices uh, yeah. wanting to connect to your network uh, wanting to access the applications that they use either in work and privately on your network and it's uh, a pretty big job to try and separate all of this um, and make sure that it's dealt with appropriately. It's a challenge as a network admin. I mean, if you look back at the traditional uh, the routing equipment you're using a branch, uh, very expensive but very hard to manage. Uh, this is where with SD WAN uh, we can orchestrate things centrally, all through a very nice GUI as well. So we can push the policies, we can make sure that the business critical traffic is flowing across our preferred site. That if any link has an issue, we can uh, continue to do business, uh, right? But then on top of that, what else can we build, right? If, if we are having uh, internet access at all these sites, uh, then all of a sudden that's a security concern. So in the same device, can we build uh, firewall functionality, like next-gen firewalls to make sure our branches are not breached, right? Uh, can we have applications assurance on top of that? So this is where MI comes in. So you as an admin can troubleshoot things in minutes uh, rather than hours. And all of this from just a single box. Sounds good to me. So you're going to show us a demo? Yes. Let's Please do. Demo. Meraki dashboard. So for this demo, I'm going to use uh, our own corporate network. So this is not a demo network. This is a live production environment that okay. we uh, uh, we use ourselves to carry our day-to-day -day business. Um, so as you can see here, Meraki as a, as a company has a few, uh, quite a few sites across the world, 49 of them. Uh, and I'm just going to drop in the London office. So uh, this is where uh, myself and Nick are currently located. So, <laughs> so just uh, need to make sure uh, this is a live network. I'm going to just look through the clients list here and I'm going to filter for my MacBook Pro. So this is the MacBook that I'm uh, currently doing this demo from. Okay. So uh, as you can see, we have full stack at our, uh, at our London office here. Um, we have a security appliance. Uh, now let's, let's say we're just provisioning this site. So I, as an admin, order an MX from you, Nick. Uh, while the MX is uh, in transit, I can automatically start configuring things in dashboard. Kind of a new thing as compared to the old way of uh, deploying IT, um, and after I provision my VLANs, etc., my DHCP, I will then go inside the site-to-site -site settings to define how this particular MX in this location will then connect to the rest of my state. Okay. So if this was a main site and had to connect to all the smaller sites, I'd use a a hub, right? But this, if this was a branch, 
I'll make it a spoke and then as you can see dashboard morphs here because you need to select one or multiple hubs so these are existing MXs that are configured as hubs across other networks okay and then of course the last thing I have to do is that from the the networks uh, downstream so this is my local area in uh, here in London uh, to choose which of the VLANs I advertise so if I have a guest VLAN I don't really want to make that available across my company I'll make sure that this breaks out locally and that's it while if I have a voice VLAN I need to make sure that all the rest of the state knows it's it's hosted here okay right um, I click save again this is a live network so I won't be doing that uh, once I click save the cloud will orchestrate an IPsec connectivity between my London site and the rest of the estate based on the settings I put here so I don't need to go and look at any other sites. I don't need to tell dashboard what remote IPs I'm connected to. All of this is done through the VPN orchestration that you get part of Meraki. Very intuitive. So you can do things that you can do in minutes what would take you hours with a traditional CLI based approach. So at this point, we have the sites connected together as we wish, uh, all securely. It doesn't matter if I use internet. It doesn't matter if I use MPLS. Uh, if I just add a 3G, 4G uh, dongle that will connect to my dongle at this particular site. So it's um, it's transport agnostic. Okay, so you can use any connectivity method and you can then ensure that the site-to-site -site VPN is enabled and SD-WAN is then used across yes. all of the sites. Okay. Yes, correctly. So uh, at the moment I have my uh, my site connected. Uh, then I have to uh, do my policy and performance based routing, right? So this is me telling the MX here in London how to treat my business critical traffic when traversing uh, the VPNs, either across other sites or my uh, cloud instances in AWS and Azure, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll, scroll down here inside the VPN traffic and we already have two rules defined. First of all, this rule looks at voice in itself. Mm -hmm. Everything coming in from our voice VLAN gets a best for VoIP preference. This means that if I was picking up the phone in London and trying to reach our San Francisco site, the MX will understand that there are multiple ways, multiple tunnels between here in London towards San Francisco. It will compute a metric to try to understand how the tunnels are performing and then Based on that metric, it will choose what tunnels to use. Okay. So if uh, my local provider here would uh, drop packets, the link is still up and running. Uh, however, that's not really good for voice. So we make sure that we don't use that link at present. When the actual ISP connection is back, uh, back on track, uh, this is where we can start load balancing across it. So this best for VoIP is already embedded inside the MX because again, VoIP is one of the major concerns when using the internet as a, as a transport. Okay. Right. It all seems very simple, uh, Dimitri. Is it really that simple? Well, let's, let's, let's pick up a different case, right? Let's, let's say I have my cheap and cheerful broadband line on WAN1. I have my uh, expensive MPLS on WAN2, which I, I still keep because I'm, I don't 100% trust the internet. But as a cost exercise, I want to make sure that my business critical app is only traversing my internet uh, if that's feasible. So this is where I can add a preference. I can select the type of traffic. Uh, we have a lot of inbuilt applications, but you can also add your own customer expressions to define the app. And you say my preferred app link is 1.1, so it's my internet. However, at poor performance, use one two okay right so as you can see here there's a performance class uh, so this is where you can define what poor performance means for that particular uh, application uh, so let's say i was using citrix and the only thing citrix cares is having less than five percent packet loss i'll say citrix i will put five percent loss the mx will monitor all the connectivity in real time and then if that, that drops, maybe it goes to 6% packet loss, it will make sure not to use that tunnel when forwarding Citrix traffic between our, between our sites. Fantastic. 
So how do we uh, how do we monitor this? Because uh, up until now we we configured we expressed our intent through dashboard, but how is this actually how is this actually running? Uh, so this is where uh, we build this VPN status page to show you how DMX in London is uh, currently connected. So these are the peers uh, in within oh, San Francisco, Sydney, AWS instances. Mm -hmm. Currently everything is live, so that is a traffic light system showing you if there's any issues in connectivity. And then if I was interested in a particular uh, particular uh, peer, I can click on each of these links and understand how healthy my VPN tunnels are. Um, so as you can imagine, in this example, our Finsbury appliance is connected to Sydney. I have two internet links at each site. So I have four potential ways of communicating between the sites. And here is dashboard showing us for the last month, the quality of service across each of these tunnels. So if your service provider is giving you a, a, a bad SLA, uh, SD1 makes sure that your business critical apps are not affected by this, yeah. but also you have the visibility um, of what's happening and you can go back to them as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so actually this brings me to uh, the MI function and the fact that if this is happening on a site and you might have 20, you might have 200 sites uh, and you're uh, interested to see how uh, the provider you're using uh, is uh, giving you service, um, this is where you, you can just hop inside the dashboard, inside One Health here, and look at all this info, but from an organization view. So rather than you going at the, on each MX, you can proactively see the performance. You can see the ISPs that are serving the sites. You can see if there is any loss and latency. Uh, you can see maybe the signal strength if you're using any sort of LTE failover, right? Um, some of our customers have an active standby um, setup, but do they actually know if, st if the standby links are ready to kick in? You never know until one goes down. Yes, yes, but that, it's, it's too late, right? So we're trying to to enable IT administrators to already know and to plan whatever that's getting a new service provider at the area, uh, getting that extra resiliency or even capacity upgrade because as more people use the network, uh, you know, hopefully they have a good experience doing that, uh, you're gonna have more bandwidth requirements, which again, using the internet as a transport is quite a cheap and easy way to, uh, to provide, uh, right? Anything else that you think is of interest or do you think that encapsulates our SD-WAN presentation for today? Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty much what we uh, we have for today. Uh, but hopefully i uh, see you soon to discuss uh, more in depth the oh, security, <laughs> the security aspects of the box. Season two, episode three, definitely worth doing. Thanks very much, uh, Dimitri. And then we're going to look up. So thanks very much, Dimitri. That was uh, pretty interesting. I think yeah. uh, our customer's going to love that video. Um, and if you have any comments or if you have any more questions regarding SD-WAN or Meraki Insights, um, please post them uh, in the comments field. Uh, Dimitri and I will keep a close eye on them and see if we can answer some of those questions and get uh, more knowledge out to the market. Mm. And also, please, uh, please check our website because we have loads of uh, webinars running. So if you're interested uh, more in how uh, Meraki can help your company, uh, that's probably the, the easiest way to find out. Thanks very much, Dimitri. Thank I guess uh, American high fives in order, shall we say? Not something we really do in Europe. <laughs> <laughs>